have a, a brief discussion uh, about the general fund, and I wanted to bring Mr. Weinberg to the podium so that we can put in perspective, you know, the, what the general fund is meant to be used for and his historical knowledge of our general fund balance, which is extremely robust uh, compared to uh, the past. And so if you just give us a little brief resume history of, of your career in city management and your experience with Inglewood, I'd appreciate that. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, staff. Uh, the, oh, okay, Mike's not on? Okay. Boy, this is one of the few times in my life I've ever been too tall for the mic. <laughs> <laughs> so the general fund in uh, municipal government, it's unlike our funds in our uh, private lives in that it's comprised of, uh, you know, the municipal budget is comprised of several different funds. Many of them are special funds, and they're constrained by limitations under statute. You can only spend them on certain things. As it relates to the general fund, that's the fund uh, in all governments that typically has the greatest discretion. That's the fund that we use to, to uh, pay for our, our support services that are considered to be essential services. Things like police and fire, public works, library, and so forth. Once we get into uh, taking care of the streets and that sort of thing, uh, then we start looking at things like that are proprietary funds, such as gas, gasoline taxes and that sort of thing. And then there are many, many uh, programs that are funded through grants, as you know, things like CDBG and RSIP and those kinds of programs. They typically do not come from the general fund. They come from special funds. And so that's the principal uh, difference, I think, between the general fund and discretionary funds. Uh, you know, I was listening to the uh, presentation, and one of the things that and there's a lot of great data in there at the at kind of the molecular level. But one of the things that I wanted to try and, and help clarify, I think, is that uh, the, the gold standard for, for any kind of government agency is to try and come up with something that's uh, referred to as a structurally sound or structurally balanced budget. You want that, of course, in particular as it relates to your general fund. Uh, and what a, what a structural uh, balanced budget uh, implies, or the actual definition is, that uh, with the exception of one-time expenditures, your recurring expenditures will not exceed your recurring revenues. All right? In my history, particularly as it relates to the uh, city of Inglewood, uh, we've uh, rarely been uh, in a position to say that we have a structurally balanced budget. Um, I had occasion over the last few years to work uh, in the city of San Bernardino as a city manager. Uh, we were about $39 million short that year. Uh, as it relates to a, a, a structurally balanced budget. For the last two years here in the city of Inglewood, we have essentially achieved a structurally balanced budget. Um, now that may sound odd because we, uh, we've we gone into each year saying that we had about $9.8 million. It is about the same each year, right? About $9.8 million in projected shortfall. And the reason for that was that in both those years, both last year and the current fiscal year, we included uh, about uh, nearly $10 million in capital improvement funds that were funded through the general fund, okay? Uh, so we had about, I think, in excess of about $130 million or so in, in CIPs, but we, uh, for the first time in probably decades, we said we have enough funding that we should be able to spend some money out of the general fund in CIPs, and that's what, uh, that's what occurred. So, uh, so last year, it was, there was uh, about $9.8 million in, in CIPs. And, uh, and coincidentally, we were about $9.8 million uh, short starting the fiscal year. So you take away those one times, it meets the definition of a structurally balanced budget. Take away the one times and the recurring revenues coincided with the, the now, and I have a quick, quick interjection. Yeah. But why is it that we can do that? We can do that because of our reserves. Well, yes, you can do it because of your reserves, and you can also do it because historically, uh, very few cities ever uh, spend the full amount of their appropriated budget. Um, with the exception of, of catastrophes, there's almost always savings, and uh, I have, we have to remember that about 80% of, uh, of any municipal budget goes to salaries and benefits. During the course of the uh, operating year, there's going to be turnover. 
and uh, typically it takes a, a number of weeks, sometimes a couple of months or more, to fill those positions. And so salary savings are almost always guaranteed in any operating budget. So it was it was fair to expect that we would have uh, a, somewhere in the neighborhood of about $10 million in salary savings, and that alone would, would uh, be able to compensate for the nine plus million dollars in planned CIPs. Hmm. Additionally, and uh, Ms. Buchanan, I'm sure, uh, and, and uh, Mr. Atwell will, will agree with me, rarely do we spend 100% of our planned CIPs. So going into the budget with, a, with, with what appears to be uh, a deficit each one of the last two years of $9.8 million was, uh, was a- Ambitious. It, well, it was ambitious, but, but there was every reason to believe that we would, uh, we would make up uh, for that $9 million deficit. However, deficit. if we somehow miraculously were able to do that, are we solvent enough in our reserves to have done it with no problem? Well, your your own fiscal policy in the city says that uh, that we we need to set aside twenty five percent of our annual operating budget for reserves. Okay, that's and and that's ambitious. A lot of yeah. cities have somewhere in the neighborhood of five to ten or fifteen percent. You have twenty five percent, which means that with a hundred and sixty million dollar general uh, general fund, you should have about forty million in reserves. But so we Mr. have. Mayor, you know how much you have in mm -hmm. reserves. Yeah. We have about $75 million in reserves uh, that, that are liquid, and you have more reserves set aside in other forms of assets. So, so in totality, non-liquid and liquid reserves were somewhere in the 100 to $104 million level. To put that in perspective, the city of Torrance, which is 140,000 people, a bigger police department, a bigger city, they have 650,000 in reserves whereas we're approaching 74 million liquid, 100 million total. So what, what I'm trying to get across is that, you know, there, there are some people that looked at that $22 million figure and they don't understand it. They don't understand how, well, the Super Bowl was here. How is it you have a, a $22 million deficit? What they don't understand is that it's not, it's not part of our structural financial picture here. That basically represents our ambition to completely restore the infrastructure of the city. Well, that's true. And the only other thing that, that uh, I would want to point out is that um, although it looks like there's a, a, a still a remaining $2 million in, in this year's projected $22 million uh, deficit that we have to make up, we've through mid-year, we, we, we project that we're going to make up $19 million of that. So it, it's, it's not really a $22 million deficit. It never it's, was. It, it never was. But but importantly, and, and this has been pointed out, when you close out a fiscal year, fiscal years are not packaged like like um, like some other expenditures. They tend to lapse in, into the next fiscal year. And so, as, as has been pointed out, um, we we entered the year with an approved budget, but in the last quarter, uh, it, it was clear that there were certain uh, expenditures relative mostly to, to projects, to CIPs, but also to some other uh, expenses that were going to need to be paid in the next fiscal year. And that doesn't always come through until until October or November, even though the budget has been approved typically in August and September. So we finished last year with a, with a, uh, with a positive fund balance of over $14 million. If that $14 million would have simply been carried over into the next fiscal years, as our obligations were, you would never see $22 million up there. Mm -hmm. So where did the $22 million go? It went into the reserves, all right? So you can, you can either put it in your savings or your checking. We put it into our savings, figuring that if we needed to, if we could exactly. make it to $22 million during the course of this operating year, we would then go pull from our, from our uh, reserves, which is in, in effect is a savings for us. And, and it was a conscious decision, and I'll say it was on my behalf, to force us to be more realistic about what we're going to actually get done in the coming fiscal year, knowing that we had the money in the reserves if it were to come to pass. And so this is a, a policy change to basically try to budget for the things that we believe that we can finish. Yes, I, I, and, then if, and then if I could if I could just comment a little editorial, I was very pleased to see the council um, give the, uh, the city manager additional uh, authority, but I, I wanna make sure I understand uh, you know what you're saying it's my understanding that what you're saying is that city manager can't enter into a new contract for five hundred thousand no. dollars but that once once the city council 
This is um, signed by the mayor. Signs uh, an agreement. See, many of our many of our contracts, uh, particularly for services related to uh, inspections and plan check for the for the large venues, are um, are written in a way where it says, in fact, one's going to come to you in, in just uh, two or three weeks from the development uh, department. It says that we're going to we, we're, we can spend up to five million dollars for uh, for inspection fees. Uh, necessary to, to keep the uh, the uh, I to a dome uh, the into a dome uh, on on uh, schedule. So typically, what would happen is if if you if you uh, approved a, an agreement like that for five million dollars today, um, over the course of the next two years, what would happen is the finance department, the purchasing uh, manager, would go ahead and they would encumber that five hundred thousand dollars, even though it's up to five hundred thousand. Five million. I'm sorry, five, up to five, five million. million. Even though it's up to five million, they would encumber the five million because potentially you could be on the hook for five mm -hmm. five million, even though it was only it was only authorized up to five million. Mm -hmm. So what doesn't get spent between now and and uh, and October one rolls over because it's mm -hmm. a it's a it's a multi year agreement. So so unless you unless you move savings operating savings with that, you start next year. With a deficit. With a, with a deficit. So, so rather than encumbering five million dollars when you when you agree to a, 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 a contract like that, uh, you can you can authorize the immediate encumbrance of five hundred thousand, mm -hmm. and then each time that uh, the development department says, "Well, we've exhausted the five hundred thousand." They don't have to come back to you for an amendment because if I understand it correctly, and tell me if I'm wrong, you just authorize the city manager to then say, we'll move another 500,000 under mm -hmm. that contract into encumbrance and have it ready to be spent. Ready to be spent. And well, once again, affirmed, that would be replenished again for a new opportunity. Yeah, it's because absolutely. they Because once it gets affirmed two weeks later, then that starts over. Absolutely, but the five million dollar encumbrance doesn't get carried into that the next correct. year, um, and and become a, a, a debit on on your. And, and it, it allows us flexibility <clears throat> so that we don't have to worry about is the council dark? Do do we have to schedule a special meeting to, you know, to increase the the funding available for this contract? It's like a business would do it, and he would just report back to the board of directors within two weeks. Sure, that's what I understood. Mm -hmm. so. I think that's it. Any other questions? No, I, I think that you've done quite enough. <laughs> but I would like to say something, and just to be clear, because, uh, you know, and we all know Mr. Weinberg has been with us for many Ever. years, forever, and, you know, he's been with us through some very tough times where, you know, he, he alluded to the fact that uh, he recently has noticed that the last couple of years we have a structurally balanced budget, Whereas we both know uh, maybe 15 years ago, 20 years ago, it, that wasn't the case. We were doing things that probably were uh, quick fixes. We'll call them one-time things we were doing to save the budget. But what I wanted to clarify, because we're obviously doing this for the public's benefit, so I want to go one step further in this. And that is to say that the first thing you do is make sure, just like in a home, you make sure you're going to have enough to run that home, which in this case is our city. We're, we're making sure, and that is the gold standard, as Mr. Weinberg said it, to, to run the structural deficit. What has actually appeared to look like we're, uh, we don't have enough money is that we're saying, but we're probably going to want to do this, 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 and this. Oh, and let's set aside that money. And that's what we're doing here. And now what we're saying is structurally, we're fine, which is what Mr. Weinberg said, just to clarify, correct? Now, having anticipated any potential projects in, in capital improvement, we went back and forth on a lot of that. Well, you did with the mayor. But I, what I want to point out is the fact that this is not an uncommon practice. This is actually the norm throughout cities across the country. Am I right, Mr. Weinberg? It, well, there's there. It, well, yes. I mean, we all operate uh, under the, the same kind of dynamics that occur in, in municipal financing and, and municipal accounting. Uh, some cities... Would uh, would naturally handle any carryovers into the next year by by moving the the positive fund balance over as well. We simply set it aside 
and as a conscious decision and and so we can bring it back anytime we want well thank you for pointing that out yeah. because that even makes it even better right on our end but what i'll tell you is that um the one good thing that it gives us is the opportunity to plan ahead to say hey we're going to do this but for right. folks who may be confused or some folks may misconstrue the numbers that's why it's good we're clarifying this because i know that's the exercise we're doing right now so thank you mayor if i can so <laughs> Again, thank you, and, and Ms. Buchanan, thank you, and all the folks in finance, our folks, for you know the, putting together a, a more accurate picture of where we are as a city uh, in our financial situation, right? Because folks are always looking at that, and folks say, "Wow, you're getting close to July," and and because some folks think you know there are cities that go July to July, we're October to October, and so some folks panic because they go, "Oh man, it's already June. You haven't done a." A media report, our media report isn't done till now. We go till October. You said uh, one thing that, that I got to remind folks. There's something called basic accounting principles. And that's what most of us use for our home and stuff like that. But when you talk about municipal accounting principles, that's the dynamic of how money is spent, how it's encumbered, right? How it shifts from one to the other. And I'll tell you, it's been an educational process for me, even back when I was uh, on the police department in Santa Monica, helping do budget there for just the PD, right? But now as a council member, you're doing and working on the whole city's municipal budget, and it is quite an eye-opener, uh, but that's why we have our folks that, that we depend on, and that's why we have the oversight of our audits that are done of our uh, financial situation to keep us on target. And so I just want to thank everybody that's involved. Uh, thank you for giving us an accurate picture. I like the idea about shifting over to the city manager with the $500,000 so it doesn't slow any of our progress. Mm -hmm. Not at all. It, it's actually going to speed things up. But folks, again, might misinterpret that. And so we're just trying to, I think we're, 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 we're trying to really be clear that we're in a really much better situation than we've been in years past. And we're gonna continue to do better, you know, as we work our way through the pandemic to get folks back, you know, into what, what you know, we were doing in the past. An example was a library, uh, uh, Council Member Morales uh, alluded to that earlier, but it's about a mindset, a change in our mindset on how we're spending our money and how we're putting funds aside so that our city is, is solid financially. So thank you. So that last uh, point I want to make to make it perfectly clear. Our uh, general fund can balance, reserve balance compared to our expenditure plan is pushing 50%. Thereabouts in cash liquid. And if you counted non-liquid assets, it'd be like 75% or something like that. So, no, about 66%. So the point that I'm trying to make and the reason I asked you to come up, because how long ago were you city manager here? Um, over 10 years ago. Okay. Um, 15 that, years ago. 20, man. It's like asking you to give her age. Oh, okay. <laughs> so the point that I'm making is, have you ever in the history of the city seen a general fund reserve balance as a percentage of the spending plan anywhere like what it is today? No. I had to pause because I, I, it's like trying to, it's, if I told you, have you ever seen a man who's tall and short at the same time? You couldn't even wrap your head around it. I, I can't wrap my head around, uh, you know, a city our size having the, uh, having the general fund reserve that it has now based on where it was 10 years ago or so. Yeah. And so that actually would allow us to do some things if we wanted to, we could take 10, 20 million to do projects, but we, we don't do that because we're trying to assure that we never end up where we were before. And I went, when I came back, you were the interim city manager. We had no credit rating. Is that correct? It had been suspended. It had been suspended. Our, the bonds that we had outstanding were triple B minus, which is one step above junk. Uh, we were down to our last nine or $10 million. And, and we anticipated that by September, October, we wouldn't make payroll. That's correct. 
So we've gone from there to where we are now. And so I just want to, we go through these budget presentations all the time, but I want people to understand all these things that have happened, uh, SoFi, uh, YOLA, the Girl Scouts, the NFL Networks, the YouTube Theater, uh, the increase in sales taxes, they have benefited the city. And, and they've allowed us to do things that we never could do, do in the past. And so I, I want to thank you for uh, the impromptu, because, you know, like lawyers say, you never ask a question you don't know the answer to. You and I didn't rehearse this, so, but I, I knew uh, that, that it was going to go well. So thank you very much, Mr. Weinberg. Okay, All right.